Well, let's pray as we come to God's word. A loving Father, we want to hear from you. We want to learn from you. We want to put into practice what you teach us through your word. So would you please do that now? Would you open our hearts and help us to learn what you have for us today? We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, today we're thinking about hospitality. I remember someone was telling me their story of how they came to Australia. And they said that uh, when they were in India, their friend in Australia promised that he would care and provide for them when they arrived. But when they did arrive, this friend was nowhere to be found. Simply unreachable. They called and called, but no answer. This family with young children, uh, with not much money in their pockets, were stranded at the airport with nowhere to go, not knowing what to do. It was very cold and they didn't have proper Australian winter clothes. So they were in a strange country, cold, with little to no money, no friends, nowhere to go, and they didn't know what to do. But then they remembered a name, a vague phone number of a Christian family that they knew very little about. With hesitation and desperation, they dialed that number, and while the f friend never showed up, this family turned up very quickly, and they were picked up from the airport and rescued from bitter cold. This Christian family not only opened their house to them, but the very, their very hearts. And these new arrivals lived in the home not for days, but for several months until they were fully settled. This is a beautiful example of Christian hospitality. Hospitality that we are commanded in Scripture again and again. God's word says, doesn't it? Do not forget to show hospitality to strangers. It says, offer hospitality to one another without grumbling. It also says, share with the Lord's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. Well, hospitality is not an added extra, not a cherry on top. No, for Christian, it's an essential part of who we are. It's part of our DNA. That's why it's so important for us to think about hospitality as a church. And I've got two headings for us today, two simple headings. Offer hospitality to one another and offer hospitality to strangers. Before, before we get into it, let's ask... Uh, what is Christian hospitality anyway? What is it? I wonder what's the first thing that comes to your mind when you think of the word hospitality. For me, the first thing that comes to mind is hospital. Uh, or, you know, hospitality industry, hotels. And these are appropriate associations because in both hospitals and hotels, a guest or a patient is offered a place to sleep and hopefully some warm food to eat. And that's what we typically think hospitality is, you know, cozy bed and warm food. But the Bible tells us that hospitality is much, 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 much more than that. The, the word hospitality in Greek language literally means love of strangers. The essential ingredient in Christian hospitality is love. Christian hospitality is love in action with uh, skin and bones on. It is when we show love practically both in words and in actions towards others. When we receive and love a stranger, someone we don't really know or hardly know as our very own brother or sister in Christ. It is when we welcome strangers not only to our family tables, but in our very hearts. When we share with them not only our food, but our very lives. 
And the principle of hospitality is there in Leviticus verse, uh, chapter uh, 19, verse 34, and says this, The foreigner residing among you must be treated as your native born. Love them as yourself. So hospitality is treating outsiders like insiders. And God's word commands us that we are to show hospitality to one another and to strangers. Firstly, let's think about the hospitality to one another. Uh, the Apostle Peter says, doesn't it? He says to those inside the church, he says, Above all, love each other deeply. Because love covers over a multitude of sins. Offer hospitality to one another without grumbling. You know, we are commanded here to love each other deeply. And what does that love look like? One of the ways you show our deep love for one another is to show hospitality to one another. Look around you. you know, you're called to love that person who sits beside you on the pew. Or you're called to serve that young person maybe beside you or in front of you or that elderly person, that, uh, that brown person, that black person, that white person sitting next to you. You are called to love them deeply, to feed them, to clothe them, to invite them into your hearts and your homes by loving them with the love of Christ Jesus. You know, I think at All Saints, uh, we are reasonably good when it comes to hospitality to one another. Uh, I'm often encouraged, deeply encouraged by many stories that I hear. But I think one thing that we can do better is offering hospitality to people that we don't know as well inside the church. You know, people who are not part of our immediate group. Uh, there's a lot of hospitality happening, yes. But it's often with the people that we click with. Uh, people that are already in our tribe. People that we get along with. But God's word tells us that we need to cross the boundaries and offer hospitality to people inside the church who are not like us. Who are a bit different. Who are not part of our group. After all, the, hosp the word hospitality means love of strangers not love of friends. Not just uh, people who you have ears of memories with. Christ has destroyed the dividing wall of hostility that is between races, between cultures, between groups. He has made us one. We are brothers and sisters in Christ. We are one body. We say that every, every week in the church. So uh, love each other deeply. And as practical thing, one thing that you could do this month, this challenge for you, is to um, maybe this month have someone around from our church family at your home who you don't know very well. And get to know them. Show them the love of Christ. Open your home to them. Open your hearts to them. Open your lives to them. But maybe you are someone who, as you look back on your life, um, you don't really do hospitality. You know, you find it maybe bothersome. Maybe you say to yourself, oh, just leave me alone. There's a challenge for you here. As one ancient writer says, if you live as a hermit, whose feet will you wash? If you live for yourself and never offer hospitality, never open your home to others, thereby never open your hearts to others, you won't grow as a Christian. Because Christians grow through serving. If you're not serving, you're not growing. So let us leave our deserts of selfhood and wash the feet of people as we were commanded to do by the Lord himself. Serve, be hospitable. That's the command from Christ. Well, we are to offer hospitality to one another, but how we offer hospitality means uh, to God as well. It's not just the 
we, whether we do it or not, but our attitude of our hearts. It does say, doesn't it, offer hospitality to one another without what? Without grumbling. You've probably heard the joke, the old joke that someone has said, hospitality is making people feel at home when you wish they were at home. Well, sometimes, you know, uh, when guests come to our home, maybe, maybe they're bad guests. We say in our hearts, oh, why are you here? We smile outwardly, maybe, but inwardly we're like, oh, I wish you were gone. Let's confess, we do that sometimes, don't we? Uh, we grumble, we complain. Uh, well, that's not Christian hospitality, is it? Christian hospitality is when out of our deep-seated love, we gladly and joyfully share our own lives with everyone. We welcome even the so-called bad guests because we are bad guests when it comes to God. Yet he always sets a table before us, doesn't he? He always welcomes us with open arms, though we are bad guests. So hospitality is not easy. It's costly because it takes time, energy, finances. It takes relational effort. And Peter knows that. That's why he tells us not give in to, not to give in to grumbling. God's word says, offer hospitality to one another without grumbling. So firstly, we are to offer hospitality to one another. But secondly, we are to offer hospitality to, to strangers. It says there, doesn't it? Do not forget to show hospitality to strangers. For by so doing, some, have, some people have shown hospitality to angels without knowing it. Well, this verse looks back at the story of Abraham. I wonder if you knew it. Uh, he welcomed three strangers at his home, thinking they were just people, but actually they were no people. They were no human beings. They were uh, divine beings. Human, uh, they were angels. Uh, and he would have missed the special favor had he not opened his heart to them. So the whole story is there in Genesis 18. You can read it later. But the point that I'm making is that we are not only to show hospitality to each other, those who are part of the church family, those sitting in the pew. No, we are to share hospitality to strangers. We are to open both our doors and our lives to strangers in order to show them the love of Christ. Christian hospitality is not only for people that we regularly see, but also for people that we have never met. Uh, it's not only for people on the pews, but also we people that we meet on the paths. You are to show hospitality to that Muslim neighbor, that Hindu neighbor, that uh, atheist cousin, that foreign student who has no family here. You are to show hospitality to strangers. You know, that's what someone did to me when I was not a strong Christian. Uh, this couple opened their uh, house to me, opened their hearts to me. This older couple invited me to their home every Monday. Every Monday we would have dinner, uh, we have lovely conversations, meals, and uh, uh, they listened to me, spoke kindly to me, and we read scripture together. And I was a stranger, but I didn't feel like a stranger at their home. It felt, I felt loved, and that's Christian hospitality for you, welcoming strangers and making them feel at home. You know, when I was young, my parents, uh, my father used to say, you know, do not ever speak to a stranger, you know, stranger danger sort of thing. And there is a wisdom in that for a child. Uh, but, you see, our Heavenly Father doesn't say to Christians, his children, to never speak to a stranger. No, he tells us the opposite, actually. Not only to talk to them, but welcome them and love them with every fiber of your being. Because you and I were once strangers to God, but he sent his one and only son and called us to himself out of his great love for us. Do not forget to show hospitality to strangers. And let's be honest, this is very challenging. 
Uh, as I said two weeks ago, we need to see ourselves in the mirror and reflect and evaluate ourselves. So let me ask you, how do you think we are going as a church in the department of welcoming strangers? My perception is that while there are some encouraging stories, there is a lot of work to be done. I feel that uh, we are not doing so well when it comes to welcoming strangers at our church. Sadly, when a student or someone who is stranger to us arrives, most of us make little to no effort to get to know them, to make them feel welcome. You know, I have seen people uh, standing by themselves during the morning tea time. We are next door to Monash. Many students arrive and at the start of every year. How many of us have actively shown them the love of Christ? How many of us have invited them to be with us and share a meal with our families? To find belonging in the body of Christ. When I was a student, I was an international student, I longed for community. I longed for people. I longed for people to have me around, not because I needed food, but because I was very lonely, like most international students. And I think Christian community, us, is a, is a medicine for lonely souls that God has made. So here's a, here's a challenge for you. Uh, this coming year, I want you to invite someone at your home who is a stranger to you. Love them, invest your time in them. It could be a student or, or someone else. Do not forget to show hospitality to strangers, God's word says. But ultimately, our model for hospitality is Jesus himself, who both gave and received hospitality. When he walked on this earth, what did Jesus do? Jesus ate with sinners and tax collectors, with prostitutes, people that no one would want to associate with. He even accepted the hospitality of a notorious tax collector named Zacchaeus. He fed thousands of people and he offers spiritual hospitality as well. He said, didn't he, that he is the living water that can satisfy our, quench our thirst he said, didn't he, that he is the bread of life that satisfies and that he's going to prepare a place for us when we leave this earthly tent, we can be in our Father's home. You know, our spiritual Airbnb is sorted out because of Jesus. He has prepared a great feast for us. But the ultimate act of hospitality, you know it, it was when Jesus Christ died for sinners for you and me to make everyone who believes in him as a member of the household of god we were outsiders christ came and made us insiders that's hospitality for you we're no longer strangers or sojourners we have come home to god and everyone who trusts in jesus finds home with god my friends these are the roots rich roots of Christian hospitality that produce good fruit of hospitality in our lives. So friends, let us joyfully offer hospitality to one another. Let us joyfully offer hospitality to strangers without grumbling, because this is what Christ has done for us. Let's pray. Lord, we Thank you for your hospitality to us. We thank you that while we were still far off, you met us in your Son and called us home. We thank you while we were your, still your enemies, Christ died for us. And we thank you that you tell us to go and do likewise. So help us, Lord, to welcome not only those who are on the pews, but also those who are on the paths, both our church family and strangers. 
Lord, we thank you for your welcome of us and we ask that you will help us by your spirit to do this. This is hard, we know it, and we cannot do it in our own strength and we need your strength, Lord. Help us to love and show love in Christ's name. Amen.